So the wife asked, my in-laws are overly critical and do not treat me kindly or with respect at all. And, you know, otherwise we have a good marriage. My, I really, I love my husband, but I want to cut off my in-laws 100%. And, and my husband really doesn't want me to. How do we deal with this issue? One of the things that we emphasize at Emmet is the importance of working on Shalom Bayit before the problems begin. And um, I've had the opportunity to give a class to couples, a private class before the wedding, um, probably close to 200 times, different couples. And when I hear a situation where there's talk of cutting off a family member, which is, if you think about it, one of the most cruel and terrible things that should ever happen to a family member, that they're being cut off by another family member, I would say that first and foremost, the fact that it got to that point means a real failure in the couple, in the community, to help people in working on relationships. And I really want to give a chazaka baruch to all of you who came here tonight to work on your relationships because it's you who are committed to making the effort to doing a little bit more um, that really is what solidifies and keeps Kali Yisrael together. So I would just suggest two points. One, I found with couples that I've been helping over the years that very often, not consciously, but subconsciously, the couple will actually get their in-laws involved or their spouse's in-laws involved and they don't even realize that they're doing it. And sometimes they're not, they don't have the proper maybe uh, communication skills to communicate with their spouse. So when their mother-in-law asks them, how are things going? They'll give certain implications that will actually encourage the in-laws to get involved. So sometimes I think we do have to look into ourselves um, because I do find that when a couple has proper shalom bias and respect with each other, except in very, very rare circumstances, the parents and in-laws will not get involved or not get involved too much. I do find a, a certain scenario that I see this all the time where this is particularly an issue with guys and it's particularly an issue with guys who, with men who are nice people, who have good midot. They get stuck in the following situation. They feel stuck between their mother and their wife and they feel that if they do something a little bit nicer for their wife, their mother feels like they're a traitor. And if they do something a little bit nicer for their mother, their wife says, you're a mama's boy. And the guy is stuck. And a little bit this way, a little bit that way, and he's frustrated and he's stuck. And very often what I see guys do in that situation is they blame their wife for making a problem with their mother. They blame their mother for making a problem with their wife, and they go hang out with their friends. <laughs> and that's not the right solution. I think that so, much, so many issues in Shalom Bayit can be prevented if we realize that we're not going to make everybody happy all the time. Not our spouse, and not our in-laws, and not our parents. But it's about finding balance. So much of what Torah wants from us, is to, Hashem wants from us, is to have a balanced life. And what that means is, is that there are times when, as, as Rabbi Meir um, said, we have to make sure our spouse knows that they're number one. But sometimes it means that the kibbutz of aim comes in and we have to take care of our parents. But we always have to make sure our spouse knows that they're number one at the same time. And our spouse will truly respect us for navigating that complicated field. Just a quick example. Let's say a couple's married six months. Mother calls her son and she says it's 10 o'clock at night. They live maybe a half a mile from each other. And she says... My son, whatever she calls him, some sweet name, please, the light in the hallway went out. You're the only one. You're so tall. You're the only one who can change it. You know, you don't want mama to fall. And what is he supposed to do? They were, let's say, going to go to sleep soon. And now he's going to go to his mother's house. He hasn't seen her in a few days. And you know what that means. It's disrespectful just to change the light bulb. He has to stay and eat some food. And he has to talk and this and that. And it's going to be an issue in the Shalom Bayit. So I would suggest in that situation that he make a cheshbon, he figure out, is she actually in danger? Or can she keep the bathroom light on or something else to keep her out of danger? And he should say to her, 
I'll come in the morning. And he should get up a half hour earlier and actually go in the morning to change the light bulb. And if he doesn't do that, he's actually going to create a Shalom Bayit issue on all different sides. But if he does do that right thing, it's going to make things better all around. All right. So, you know, one thing I want to mention, like we hear this, like at almost every Sheva Bracha Shalom Bayit speech, <coughs> everyone says that if you, t you need Hashem in your marriage, right? If you take, uh, you know, the... Yud and the hay out of Isha and Isha, you're left with an Aish, you're left with fire. So a lot of people think that means like, oh, we have to be religious to have a good marriage. Well, I'm not saying that's true or false, but what really you have to do is to put a Shem in your marriage is to daven to have a successful marriage. You got problems with your mother-in-law, ladies? You better daven for that to be resolved. Gentlemen, you feel your wife is nagging you too much? You gotta pray to Hashem, please Hashem, help me. Right? We need to be able to dive into Hashem in order to improve our marriage. It reminds me, my first, the first Shalom Bayi question I ever got was when I was asked, what should I do to encourage my husband to go learn more? <coughs> and I told the girl, you want your husband to learn more Torah? Dive into Hashem that your husband should be able to learn more Torah. Because how can Hashem say no to that prayer? And we have to always remember, if we really want something in our marriage, we have to include Hashem, we have to dive into Hashem to answer our tefillot, our tefillahs.